What up, dudes? Robbie Rowan here. So today's episode is going to be a little bit different. Um, it's going to go under the Bearded in the Brain segment, which is a podcast segment. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> that uh, Dr. Josh Heenan and myself sit down and talk about all the cool topics within the baseball industry. This will be the 11th episode. We haven't recorded an episode in, in a very long time, but uh, you can go check out all of the episodes that Dr. Josh Heenan and myself have done over at therobbyroshow.com slash beardedbrains, one word. That link will be in the show notes. Today, we were just testing out a new IG Live format. You can bring a bunch of guests into your chat and talk, and we actually talk about some some really good topics, um, mental performance, mindset, mechanical breakdowns, in-season training, not guessing for your development, so I won't take up too much of your time here within this pre-roll, but uh, I will say if you are interested in training with the Advanced Therapy, Perform bleh, Advanced Therapy Performance Team <laughs> and Dr. Josh Sheenan himself via the 90 mile an hour formula remote programming platform, I could save you a hundred bucks. All you got to do, go to therobbyroshow.com slash beardedbrains011 or just go to the details or description on the app that you're listening to this episode on, and you can just click the link. And on that page, I'll uh, have another separate link to give you some instructions on how to save $100 on the 90 mile an hour formula remote programming. Within the show notes, I'll include all of the past episodes of Beard in the Brains. I'll include a link to the ATP or Advanced Therapy Performance apparel site where you can get all of their new line of apparel, which is absolutely dope. I'm wearing their beanie right now, swag. Um, and there will be some more links to more content that Dr. Heenan and I have done previously. Okay, I'm done talking. So let's get to this episode. Again, this is just an IG Live recorded audio. Hope you enjoy it. If you guys want to reach out to me, you can head over to therobbyroshow.com slash ask to ask me any of your questions or even to give us some uh, topics to talk about in the near future. And by us, I mean Dr. Josh Heenan and myself, or myself only. <laughs> All right, guys, enjoy uh, this audio from uh, this morning's IG Live with Dr. Heenan. Someone asked the question about, I throw 85 on the first pitch of a bullpen and then 81 to 83 the rest of the pitches. I would look into like the the fact that you might just have more freedom physical freedom, mental freedom within your first pitch compared to all the other pitches when there's now a requirement after the first pitch is completed. Um, I know I've been in that situation before, so whoever asked that question, good question. Um, you're not alone on that one. Hopefully that helps. Maybe you can try to create some more freedom uh, within your uh, remaining then, pitches. I just added Jeff. Dude, but, yo! Hey, what's up, Doc? That's what's a up, Robbie? dope hat, too. Everyone's got sick hats these days. <laughs> Um, and Sir. these comments are like, these comments are like 15 seconds delayed. Yeah. So what's going on, man? Where are you? Are you, I feel like you're in a van getting ready to go to a game. That's my guess. Uh, no, I'm, I'm sitting in a truck right now outside of the park. We, uh, we got practice in like 45 minutes. Where nice. are you at? I'm in uh Bluefield, West Virginia. Oh, West Virginia, man. I played in Charleston. What a, what a place. Nice. nice. Yeah. That's awesome. So what's going on? How can we help you? I uh, I got a question for Robbie. Let's go two to one. <laughs> Love that. What do you got, dude? Yeah. I was uh, I was wondering, uh, do you have any tips or anything for uh, just mental toughness, like during the game? I know, uh, like I'll go in the game and I'll feel like great on the mound and stuff, and then I don't know at times just not trusting my stuff and just the mental approach to it. You yeah, is that is that performance thing? based? Like why you uh, why you don't trust your stuff is because it's like more externally. I'd say a little bit performance than a little bit just kind of in between the ears, you know. Yeah, I mean, here's my thing, dude. Like we talk about like self conviction and like confidence and all that stuff. Like for me, it's always gonna be a byproduct of the amount of work that I put in, right? So like controlling the controllables essentially. So like when you're on the mound in a game, 
obviously there's so many different things from an external standpoint and an internal standpoint that occur, but for you to like essentially have one thing that you can focus on and, and allow yourself to just breathe and then remain confident in the fact that you've done everything in your ability to be successful in that moment should give you that sense of, of confidence. Now, obviously it's, it's way easier said than done, right? Like if I, I mean, shoot, man, if I had the answers, um, for a lot of like those mental things, like I wouldn't be sitting on a chair in my desk, you know, like I'd be on MLB <laughs> network right now or doing something dope. But I think that's what it comes down to, man. Cause I know from, from personal experience for me, every time that I've struggled with like in between the year stuff, like you mentioned, it's, it's always kind of a byproduct. I think of, of just the lack of trust in myself at that particular moment because of maybe I, I didn't do everything that I needed to do to put myself in that position to have success in that moment, right? I look at it like check all of the boxes that you need to check. And then when you get out there to perform, it's like, dude, I've done everything that I needed to do. I'm going to leave it all out on the field. Like, and if things don't go good, like at least I can look at myself in the mirror at the end of the day and be like, all right, like I controlled everything I needed to. Cause as, as you know, like as a pitcher, once that ball leaves your fingertips, dude, it's out of your control essentially, right? Like you can do everything yeah. up until that point, but as soon as it, it's gone, it's like, all right, man, like, did I prepare accordingly? Check that box. Now, obviously performance-based is like a completely different topic in and of itself. And like I said, there's no really right answer to, you know, how to perform better, I guess, mentally, but... I would encourage you with that thought. And then the, the other thought of me, I like if you've been following my stuff for a while, you know that I'm big on like the breath and, and being like Zen in that moment and just like <laughs> longing for the, that, that competition and allow, allow that like joy kind of to take over instead of the, all of the other components that are involved within like, gosh, I got freaking second and third, no outs with three, four, five coming up, dude. Like, Oh gosh, you know, kind of, I don't know, find find a way to be joyful in those moments that the, the fact that you like, you're out there and you get to compete. I know it sounds hippie ish and it sounds kind of, uh, you know, overdone, but again, you're, you're playing a game for a living, you know, so that's, it's pretty so, dope. So I got, I got something for you. Um, I, no, I, that I question was for me. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a good question too. So Thanks. I, do you, do you follow? Oh, what was that? Do you follow my account at all or no? You could say yeah, no. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I did. Dang it. Yeah, I know. I <laughs> that one. You should have lied. I love um, that. So have you seen, have you seen the, um, I posted a video, a uh, picture in my story in the last day or so of Nick Newell, who's one of, uh, we, we do a lot of therapy for him. Um, but he is a, uh, MMA fighter and he's got, he's got one arm. The second arm is like a, a nub, um, just past his elbow, but he's a professional MMA fighter. He's been in Bellator. I mean, he's, He's the real deal. He's probably he's probably two inches shorter than me. I probably have forty pounds on him. Nothing scares me more than wanting to fight someone like Nick because Nick has gotten his ass kicked over and over and over and over again. And I don't mean that as a derogatory thing. It's just what happens when you fight. Like you go out there, you get your ass yeah. kicked, and then you come out the next time and you kick someone's ass. Whatever. I I, I don't think there's any amount of money to give me to want to fight Nick. You could give me fifty bucks and I try to fight Robbie because I feel like at least at least I have more experience than <laughs> Robbie does in having to defend myself and like hold down a situation. And so that like blind confidence, whether or not Robbie kicks my ass, is not the point here. The point is like I'm not afraid of going out there and, and getting my ass kicked by Robbie because like I feel like I'm more prepared than him. And I think that like Robbie said, it's a really it's often a reflection of I think it's a reflection of two things. One, your preparation. So just, are you prepared? Have you done what you need to do to get in there? And by the time the game, once once you take that first that first pitch in the game, or you get the ball, and uh, the umpire rolls the ball, and you grab it on the mound, it's like, it, dude, it's it's game time. Like you're not even thinking about what's going on. It's like you've everything you've done to that point is a culmination of what's going to happen, uh, in my opinion, for the most part. Um, and then the other thing is actually funny enough, I I think. I think Instagram went a little crazy when they saw that me and E Sim were hanging out and and he thought it was so funny because it was just like I think everybody saw that we're such different people and different kind of avenues of talking about baseball. But one of the things we spent we probably spent two hours sitting talking about this was like you get like one opportunity to do all this shit. And like whether whether or not like you, you're living one life or like you get an opportunity to be an athlete and young and your best. A lot of people 
don't go out and actually try to achieve stuff and and really go the extra mile and and like going through the amount of i mean robbie's robbie's documents the amount of failure he's gone through in a very tough avenue and most guys like i know people i just talked to a friend of mine that you know he's got some good connections on on some nfl guys and he was like He's like, dude, he's like, there's guys that will drop in the draft because they're not in so they're not on social media. They can't deal with the pressure of being a highlighted athlete. And Robbie is the complete opposite. He highlights the fact like I've been struggling. I've had an injury. I've had this, that. And like being able to go out there and fail on a regular basis, whether baseball, business, uh, life relationships, fighting, it does like all of these things you got to be able to go out there and just get your reps in and, and know that like, you're ready to go. If, if you're not able to execute when you're playing, that's probably reflective of how confident you are in your abilities. Obviously that's so like easier said, right? Like all these things are super easier said than done, but yeah. I think the, the time um, I'm actually reading the book again, um, uh, mindset. And there's basically like two different ways to look at like the, the underlying kind of, dynamic within all of this is like, is failure going to define you, right? Like the fear of failure and, and how that defines somebody, whether it be an athlete, entertainer, whatever, or are you going to allow failure to be like a learning process, you know? And I think w when my career kind of started to shift was when I, I approached that, uh, that dynamic totally differently, uh, with my mind. I was like, okay, the worst case scenario is I go out and fail. And if that's the worst case scenario, then so be it. But my failure now is not going to just be defining me, even though it's an embarrassing moment. Like I've been in those shoes, like it sucks, but like allow that failure to mold you and, and allow it, like find those, those learning curves within that too. I think that's a huge aspect, especially when we talk about like baseball, a game built around failure, right? Like it's going to happen. Obviously we, we do everything in our power to try to not make it happen. But it's a part of it. And I think a lot of people will, will fear that so much that they're unwilling to put themselves in the opportunity to fail. But every time you go out there, man, like that's a new opportunity to grow. And, and you know how vital like freaking game reps are, too. So another yeah. another uh, another little tidbit there to maybe you take into your next your next outing or whatever. Just be like, all right, man, if the worst case scenario here is I, I fail, but I can I can find a way to learn from that. And a lot of it is learning about yourself and how you deal with that and how you respond to that then so be it. But hopefully that, that stuff makes sense. And again, just to echo that, that same thought, like I know how easy it sounds, right? Like it's so funny when I record podcasts on like the mental game, because I know how easy I'm making it sound it is completely different to put that into practice. Right. But you know, the best are able to do it. And if the, the fact that you can even go on here and ask that question is, it says a lot about you. So appreciate you. Dude. I appreciate it guys. Y'all, uh, y'all take care. And, uh, I want to, want to leave uh, Robbie with one more thing. here. Let's go. Uh, Cheddar Bob. Cheddar Bob. <laughs> <laughs> I got to drop that apparel line, dude. Cheddar Bob apparel. That's dope. Yes, sir. Good luck, dude. Hey, good, good luck, buddy. Appreciate it, guys. Yeah. Nice job, Rob. Dude, what a nice guy. Yeah, that was great. West Virginia. Jo Joey? No. Joey. Joe Archer. Oh, I thought he was down here. Is this going to be recorded? I'm recording it right now, so hopefully it comes out pretty good. We'll turn it into like a quick little podcast too. So, oh, this is now I'm going to be on the podcast. Well, I mean, it's only been 14 minutes. That's true. And hopefully, when I play this back, your all your audio is cut out, and it's just yeah. me. So then I can get more viewers. You know, Joey, are you down here? Uh, never mind. Um. That was my teammate. There we go. Let's see. Oh, here we go. Let's see if we can get this one in. So, Town Spa is my favorite hometown pizza, Ravi. And someone just offered to... Luke! What's up, Josh? Ravi, have you met Luke before? I don't think so. What's Luke? up, Ravi? What up, doing? Luke? Luke, Luke is... Um, he's been with us for a while. Stan he's from Stanford, Connecticut. Uh D two ball player, ended up playing pro last year and now is where are you signed again? I forget. Um to the Boise Hawks in the Pioneer League. 
Oh, nice. Yeah, I, I, I just saw, I was talking to somebody from uh, the Missoula team. I didn't even know that they changed that whole Pioneer League into Indie Ball now. Yeah, so it was like one of the leagues that got uh, that got cut by... Yeah, I played in that league, dude. My first two years of Pro Ball were in, was in the Pioneer League. Okay, sweet. It's sweet. it's beautiful, was dude. I was too yeah. I was too young and and ignorant to realize like just how gorgeous the uh all the, the all those parks were. Yeah, that's definitely something I'm looking forward to. Yeah. Uh, hopefully I have a couple of days off here and there to, you know, explore a little bit. Yeah, do you so you guys have the schedule and everything, right? You know when you start? Yeah, so it's I think we're starting in the like the middle of May, maybe second week. Yeah. Good you know, like 90 something game schedule. Right. Yeah. I, I saw like a lot of those, uh, a lot of the indie ball teams are starting like around the same, like May 20 something date and going, right. um, for, uh, a lot of the schedules that I looked at, they're pretty like grueling schedules, like a lot of games, very little off days. So yeah, for sure. I think we got like one off day a week. Ooh, the grind, especially in the pioneer league, dude, you're going to love that travel. Yeah. You better have some good podcasts to listen to, bud. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. How you doing? You feeling good? Yeah, feeling good. Feeling good. We got uh, live tomorrow. Bobby. What we got? I said no. We're trying to get him out of that league real quick. He's he's made a nice run to 97 right now. So he's coming. You're at 97? Yeah. yeah. Bro, that is yeah. a, that's such a testament to like the 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 competition these days, you know? Like D, you were a D2 <laughs> guy? Yeah, so I graduated in 2019 um from bentley university it's bro you look off. 30 <laughs> <laughs> and what and what are you how old are you 23 uh, i'm 23 yeah wow how about that guess my math is so good i went i didn't go to college but it's fine dude that's crazy man 97 so what what you're doing is essentially working yeah yeah definitely i mean you know in college i was up to like 94 okay like occasionally but you know it's uh it's been quite a jump dude so like- when you went d2 sorry i think i interrupted it's crazy when i start talking like i i, I your audio gets cut is that how it is for you guys uh that happened yeah i, I saw it with josh when i was talking before he said yeah like talking. i saw your lips moving and i was like wait i can't you know but i was gonna ask like when you went d2 like what was your velo um coming out of high school comparative to how it is now <laughs> It's funny, like, people ask me that all the time, like, especially, like, younger guys in high school. Um, so, I mean, you can even see, like, on my perfect game profile, like, the high, the hardest I threw was, like, 85, um, you know, and but I'd say mainly I was, you know, low 80s, you know, Sheesh. We the, like, you know, guns or anything like that in high school, but, yeah. you know, that's that's as far as I know. What do you think was, like, Obviously, there's so many contributing factors to like what goes into velocity development and everything. But what do you think are, are like the biggest things that really took you? I mean, shoot, dude, like low 80s. Now you're at 97. Like, right, dude, you're like the one percent of the one percent of the one percent of the one percent. Like, a, that's crazy. Like, what do you think it was that really contributed to that? Yeah, so it's funny. Like, I'd say like right when I got to to college. You know, by the end of my freshman year, I had probably already gained, you know, five miles per hour. I was probably touching around 90. And, you know, that that jump was, you know, mainly just from, you know, getting a little stronger, yeah. putting on some. Um, and then, like, minor, you know, minor mechanical adjustments probably, you know, got me up, you know, to my sophomore year. At the end, I was, you know, topping out at 94. That was the first time I hit that. Um, but um, I'd say, like, now, you know, after I was, like, kind of stuck in that range for a couple of years like kind of just you know getting a little bit more explosive and then like even more like smaller mechanical adjustments just really fine-tuning some things yeah you know is what took me to that next level yeah that's usually what it is too for like as you get older like you velocity can skyrocket but like the amount of like if, if it's from a pitching mechanic standpoint like the amount of mechanical tweaks are very minimal like you already have a pretty good idea at that age of the way you move of, of your body like of the things that that you respond well to and so on and so forth so uh, it's so funny like when when i ask people about questions like this or when people ask me questions about this in, in terms of like how to gain velocity and it's like they're expecting that it's a drastic difference from like your mechanics in you know at 18 compared to like 20 and uh it's never really the case you know it's maybe like a small tweak here and there and and it's crazy how much of a difference that stuff can make and it just goes to show how much like 
like super intentional work needs to be involved within that process too. But that's crazy. 97. I want to see Luke. I want to, see if you can pull up some good pictures from senior of high school, ideally, ideally like same angle as like now. And if we can just do like a side by side, cause I mean, you're, you're framed two different. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I got a, I have a few different pictures I could definitely send your way. Yeah, sure. uh, it's actually, it's actually funny. Cause like right now, um, I'm like probably like 200 pounds. Um, and you know, I'd, I'd been up to like 220, you know, like last winter and, and like two, two seasons ago. Yep. And so it was kind of like, you know, I, I had that, like, you know, that's what got me from like 85 to like into the low nineties. So I was like, okay, let's, let's see like, you know, how far this will take me. Um, but then I, you know, I kind of realized like, okay, I'm, I'm probably moving like a little bit slower now. Um, and then, you know, I, I took some of that, that weight off and it wasn't bad weight, you know, like yeah, I was fat or anything, um, but kind of just like felt myself moving faster, you know, and, you know, obviously, you know, still working out, still strong, still had that strength base. Um, so it's, yeah, it's like finding what, what weight is right for you. That's going to vary for everyone too, man. It's a big bear. That's awesome. What do you got going the rest of today? Anything? Um, I actually don't really have anything today. Um, I don't have any lessons today. So kind of just worked out this morning um, and then threw right after that. But just, just chilling right now. We got uh, live tomorrow. So that'll be fun. Nice. Well, good luck. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate it. Hey, I'm buddy. I'll hey, you later. Nice meeting you, dude. Best of luck nice. to you moving forward, man. Enjoy the league. I appreciate it. Same to you. Yes, sir. Appreciate you. See you guys. See you. All right. Yeah. And um, let me see if we can add some more here. Is there any topics that you want to get into, Rob? I'm just going to look at some of these questions. Flat ground versus mound velo difference. In terms of what? Is there a difference? Negative three is what we see. Should be. Should be. Uh, here we go. Come on. The all requests. All right. Guys, if you want to get in on here, just hit a request. Hit that request button. Uh, Pens 8485 game up to 91. Yeah, I, dude, I used to always be a guy like that. Um, it's an adrenaline based thing, man. If you can find a way, whether it be like a visualization mentally or like maybe throw bullpens with a guy standing in the box, if you can just find a way to replicate more adrenaline in your pens, that would be hey, What's up, guys? We got a jersey on the ceiling? Who do we got? Uh, yeah, I'm going to put on a shirt on real quick. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd be naked. Uh, hold on. Where are we? We got uh, Grant Stone is in here. Nice. Grant, hang, hang. I got a good one for you, buddy, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you to come in live a little bit. What's um, up, guys? What's up? Yeah, I got the what's Wade jersey over here. Wade? Uh, oh, Miami. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's, it's flipped, so that was, that was oh, hard. Is it? That was hard on me to read that. I did it backwards. Yeah. Uh, I think we went live before, oh. if you remember. Dr. Heenan. Did we? Yeah, we did. Well, that's rude. You don't remember that. Like in August, August ish. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, what, do we, what do we talk about? Uh, we just talked about my like ninety formula strength metrics, and the oh. uh, school I'm at. Huh? Were, did you have teammates with you at the time? I had one teammate with me. Yeah. Yeah, hey, yeah. I... It was the reverse lunge, and then I emailed you, and I got it to three fifteen. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, how did he picked up during that time? Or uh, so that was in the fall, and I was injured, and uh, they they just like no rush, just get ready for spring stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So January and some of February, we threw live in the indoor because we've had like Corona breakouts and this like shitty weather stuff yeah. like that. And I've been like eighty four to eighty six, and then uh. Now we had like a major outbreak, like I'm talking about like 25, 30 positives. Oh boy. So, so yeah, we had like two weeks cancel and now we're starting back up this weekend. Jesus. 
yeah, so we'll see what happens then. But I did get my reverse lunge up through 15. I think when we talked, it was at like 225 for five. That's right crazy, that. dude. That's a huge Three. jump. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I got 11 body weight chin ups now. And I could do 250 for sure easily. And, uh, like for two. How's your health feeling in terms of like you? Oh, my arm feels great. Awesome. Everything's good. That's great. So, yeah. I, and then I'm, I'm in Virginia Beach right now. I play Juco ball. So when the weather heats up and everything, we'll see. Awesome. We should, we should see a nice jump. But, yeah, I do have, like, a couple questions for y'all. Yeah, let's shoot. All right. So about with the drive leg and all this stuff, it's probably been, like, around a year for now where I just can't figure it out. Like, so when I when I pick up, I'm leading with my hip and stuff. And then once when I drop and drive, my drive leg just collapses like super early and then my front leg starts to swing and I'm getting literally zero power from my legs. So I would look into, obviously this, this all kind of is like one of those things where super hard to like to just, we're essentially speculating, right? Cause you don't have like the video. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm going off of what I get often and I would look into how you are accelerating down the mound. Okay. So like, the drive leg is your accelerator. Your lead leg is your is your brake brake pedal, right? So I see a mm -hmm. lot of guys that have a collapsed drive leg, even though they have the required stability to to absorb exactly. force, right? Yeah. So I see a lot of times it breaks down because you're 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 accelerating your body with your lead leg, so then your your lead leg is pulling your drive leg early. This is just again maybe one of those speculation things. Um, but maybe think about like setting up some progressions to just feel like loading your drive leg and allowing the load of your drive leg and the natural occurrence of the transfer when your rear hip internally rotates to allow that to accelerate. Does that make sense? It does make sense. Yeah. Maybe it, I'm not saying it's like a hundred percent, like a for sure thing. I just see yeah. like, I, I have like maybe like three or four different types of cases with guys that like have the required stability to mm -hmm. effectively do the things that the drive leg needs to do, but yet mechanically they're still doing it. Now, are you somebody that like you can go out and long toss and your long toss is like yes, exactly. drastically higher. So that's yeah. an external sense of stability, right? So it's like authentic uh -huh. versus unauthentic or inauthentic. I'm not sure. I, I always say, I always say yeah. unauthentic, but um, I would just say, try to then because you have the movement pattern you just exactly. need to have that pattern like translate onto the mound with that's what i'm struggling through at. space yeah so like what do you got josh no so so this is this is where i think robbie and i differ a lot in our approach uh in terms of how we implement it but but like our thoughts are the same so for me this is where i'd be like hey i want to see your running guns like i want to mm -hmm. see your nine uh, at nine seven five ounce running guns what happens um, mine's is uh you, my five is I mean, 91 and then my seven is 93 93 and that and that um, was last year yeah and then what what was your mound velocity then 85 yeah, yeah. so it's an external sense of stability and, well not necessarily so <clears throat> immediately immediately that tells me you have some uh mound that's like the first thing that i'm seeing and then as a seven ounce at a 93 miles an hour that's that means you got another uh six so that's 99 in the tank that should be a 93 on a i don't know no yeah 99 six three six yeah 93 on your running gun for a five ounce which means you should have 90 on the mound without, without really any issues. Exactly. So you have definitely have a mechanical thing going on, mm -hmm. but, but this is where, this is where I think Robbie and I are a little bit different um, in terms of like how we like diagnose the problem is like, we know something mechanical is off. Yeah. I would have probably a trunk stability, potential arm mechanic issue uh, or limitation because when your flat ground is that much harder and your seven ounces are that much harder, there's a lot of moving factors. We know a lot of guys are much uh, immediately much tighter inside of 90 at seven ounces than they are at five ounces too. So that to me, 
a lot of times what we see, and I have no idea with your arm action because I've never seen you throw, but a lot of times I'll see guys with like a nine or seven ounce and they're here. Um, they're five ounce on a running gun. They're here. They're on the mound. They're out here at front foot mm-hmm. contact. Like, it's like, okay, we can do all the drive leg stuff in the world to try to fix that. But is, but is that, is the drive leg the symptom of a lot of other things going on or is, or is the arm the symptom of the drive leg? And usually it's the, the drive leg um, becomes the root problem and we need to fix yeah. it. But the good thing is, is that you have that potential. So you have, you know, you have 99 in the tank on a flat ground. So you, so ballpark, you got a hundred in the tank. Why can't you transfer that? And now that's the, what drives me crazy. You know, I, you know, I think you'd be a really good candidate to get either consult with Robbie or myself. Um, just I to- was going to buy uh, Robbie's analyst, but since we're in season right now, I didn't want it to like mess with my head and stuff. I was definitely going to buy it like in yeah. May. It's tough. Yeah. Especially in season. That. Yeah. Cause, Cause you I'm, don't want to tends to think a lot on the mound. So mm-hmm. if I buy that, I think, I don't know. So I'll just wait a little bit. Yeah. Whatever. But yeah. And then, uh, I got like all the metrics now and the formula, I got like the mobility and all this stuff. So I really can't like figure out yet holding that drive leg while driving. So let me ask a really simple question. Again, this is kind of based off of not seeing your video, but like mm-hmm. when you're on the mound descending from peak leg lift, where does the, your lead foot go? Does it go out like towards um, the direction of the catcher or does it go drop towards the direction of your drive foot on the mound? I would say more out. Okay. So when you long toss or when you do a running gun, where's the posh, like, where's the direction of your lead foot going? Like it starts at the same kind of position of your drive foot, right? The base. Yeah. Yeah. So like, that's another thing that I see oftentimes. And that goes back to the, the original thought of like accelerating with your drive leg rather than accelerating with your lead leg. So you'll see guys with a lot of like high long toss numbers because what do you do like in a shuffle, right? You typically Mm -hmm. go behind or in front, which then takes your drive foot, you know, from your drive, your, uh, or your lead foot from your drive foot out, which is then allowing your drive leg to properly accelerate your body. Whereas then on a mound, you go usually out this way, which then kind of pulls your drive leg. Is that, can can you visualize what, what that That, looks like? Yeah, I know what you're saying. That's what I see. I see like when I drive down the mound and my front leg. So I would say, I would encourage you with, uh, do some progressions, um, whether it be flat ground or on a slope of like the Kershaw drill, um, which is like up, down to out and see if you can find a way to clean up your drive leg or even just don't even do the up, just start like down. Um, and then just see if there's, there's a window of opportunity there. Again, it's all just kind of right now throwing stuff up, up against a wall, seeing if it sticks. I I just can't see it. But, um, as long as all that makes sense, maybe you just have some more, uh, tools in the tool bag potentially. Yeah. That's what I think. I know you don't want to get in your head. I don't think there's any downside in taking video just for yourself right now, looking at your side view of your running gun at seven and and five ounces, and then looking at what happens on the mound, because you're going to, I'm telling you, like, if you spend a couple minutes, you are, you will find, if you look at, um, if you look at max external rotation. So when your front foot, uh, when your front foot hits the ground and you're externally rotated, and then also look at, um, front foot, uh, front foot contact on the ground where your arm is. And then also just, just look at your driving pattern. If you look at those three, as you're moving through the motion on those three different throws, you will, you will find something. I don't, yeah. but, yeah. but you're going to find it and then you can start to play with it. And we already know that you're, you know, if you're 99 on a, a 99 for a um, seven ounce throw and and at 85 on the mound puts you at like 88 as like the flat ground. There's a, there's a 10% discrepancy. That's huge in the game of baseball. So I would play with that. And, and the thing that a lot of guys get worried about is they're like, Oh, I'm worried about messing with my mechanics in season, which I completely get. But also your fix may be as simple as like, Hey, I'm just going to play catch with a seven ounce ball for the next three weeks and and that that may clear up some of your issues because mm-hmm. of stability issue. And and when Robbie talks, when Robbie was talking about, are you kind of reaching your foot to home, or is it going straight up and down like towards the towards the back foot? What I what I see a lot of, and Robbie can attest to this to one of our mutual friends clients. Um, when he, 
a lot of guys that I see with elbow issues or drive leg issues are, that are really trunk stability issues, they'll actually yeah. leave their leg, their front leg out uh, like an arm. They'll reach out to third base to create stability. Counterbounce. Yeah, so they can get down. Counterbounce, yeah. What'd you say? It's a counterbounce mechanism to exactly. help load up the the rear hip. Exactly. And and that may there may be easy fixes for that. So you're just gonna have to look at it and then try to find drills that can can help you time those things and get you a little bit stronger in those positions so that you don't have to counterbalance. Yeah, that's cool. Um also since I'm already like pretty strong with all that stuff, you think I should like start mixing in more like explosive stuff through like the lifts that I do now? You can, uh, but realize that you're in season. So, you know, you're, that is true. so you're doing, you're doing plyos all the time. That's I'm starting to, I'm starting to do it more. Well, no, no, oh, no. Throwing, throwing wise. Throwing is a, is a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I think that's where people get mistaken with a lot of this stuff. You're going to, what you're going to lose in your strength base, you're already going to gain in your plyos that you're going to have in, in season and, and you're, it is just throwing or getting after it, um, you know, long tossing drills, um, mound drills, stuff like that. The last thing I'll ask you is, do you notice a big difference in velocity between being from the stretch and from um, the windup? Not really. Okay. Nah. I, I wonder. I wonder if the stretch makes things just easier for you to get into your hip, and there's not, then there's less kind of. Um, uh, Mark thing is, I started doing. I started pitching just from the stretch to like make it more simplified yep and then i kind of like banged the wind up like for like the past month i don't and wind up overrated really changed yeah so it, yeah i'm gonna start pitching from the wind up now maybe it's the opposite you know maybe. what i mean maybe yeah. so well don't because i was the, the biggest advice i can give you is don't guess you gotta take video you gotta figure it out via video. oh yeah for sure yeah i'm we're definitely taking video and stuff but uh maybe the wind up helps me stay in the hip more just like the rhythm and stuff like that potentially so we'll see that on the mound because like the past month i have i haven't thrown from the lineup on the mound i just was doing the stretch make it like simple but it's not working what is your long toss number did you say 300 feet it's 300 on the dot 310 310 310 yeah yeah um it's such a fine line between like what josh says and don't guess and then what i kind of say in in trial and error i was just thinking about that but you <laughs> But, but trial and error. There's a big difference, and this is where I think the majority of of like the sports performance in baseball world just completely get lost. I'm saying don't guess in terms of like take the information, get the information. You're saying guess in terms of trying drills. Right. It's identification. Yeah. It's identifying the absolute in the problem, and then the trial and error is like, okay, well, then we na- we have the the underlying issue. Now we just – how do we fix it, right? Like that's going to look differently for everybody. Absolutely. I would, I would also look at uh, something I do with, with guys that like – so, for example, I'm, I have a client right now. I'm, I'm putting his, his numbers down, and he has a mound 83, long toss 320. And his pull down's eighty five. So this is a this is a very interesting case because usually you would see like long toss and pull down numbers like relatively close, right? Because you have the external sense of stability or uh, drive leg stability and the momentum. So what he does is he he helps aid in the way that he loads his drive leg and he loads his rear hip by the way that he tilts his trunk because you're throwing up. Mm-hmm. That could be another thing. That's why I asked your long toss number because that's something that I do. I can throw it 700 feet, but I can't throw it 110 mm-hmm. off a mound yet. And if you were to look at my videos, yeah. and I know Josh and I did a lot of stuff before I went to winter ball on this because there was kind of a thing that I wanted some help on. Um, and the one mechanism that we saw, and I actually just did a video on my YouTube on this, was like how you can help load your drive leg by the way that your trunk posture is. But there's obviously the fine line of like you don't want to shoot so far back that now you defy what gravity's offering and you defy yeah. that forward momentum. But again, when Josh says take video, that's extremely valuable because A, you can you don't have to guess, you can see the absolutes, and then B, everyone has a phone with a very, very good camera. Right. So like yeah. there's no reason why you can't just get a twenty dollar tripod off Amazon, boom, side video, and then all right, that's my long toss, that's my pull down, and then that's my mound. Like when I do my analysis clients, like you're getting 
uh, I asked for four videos, two mound videos, open side, behind, and then pull down long toss because those give us a really a good amount of information, right? Um, so I would encourage you to look at that. And then we just mentioned like four potential different things that we can look for, right? So you have a pretty good idea yeah. going into it now. So that's good. Okay. Awesome, man. Well, good luck. And, and I hope you're able to figure it out because that's a ton of, you know, you're, you're going it, to, it's a lot of velocity you're leaving in the tank here. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. right, well, exciting, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, for yeah, sure. Keep it working hard. Exciting. All right. All right, Robbie. We got a, a special one here. Dude, I got to go. <laughs> no, you don't have to go. Dude, All no, right. I, I got to work for a living, man. Yo, what's going on? What's going on, fellas? How are you guys? Dude, great. I'm great. Have you noticed everyone that's come on our live has just sensational hair? I mean, they're all they're all very good looking. Just, what? Thank you. This is this is terrible. <laughs> Hold on. I got, I got a big... Let's see. What are you doing, guy? One second. Uh, I am sitting here finishing some readings before class, actually. Readings? What are you reading? What are you learning? I'm curious. Um, I am learning about the intersections between legal and uh, standard history, actually. Holy smokes. That sounds like you're way smarter than me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. What's going on? So, Josh, we can't hear you. Oh, can you hear me now? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So, Grant... And Robbie, you know yeah. Robbie. This is my brother-in-law. So, dude, he just, as of two days ago, got accepted to Harvard's Divinity School. Very cool. Getting his master's. Harvard, yes. Harvard baseball. Oh, nice. And you had Thanksgiving with Robbie one year. So. Holy smokes! What is the IQ in this room right now? <laughs> I'm really oh, holding no. this down. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, so we're very excited. What what is what does Joey need to know about Harvard, especially as a master's student? Well, I'm now not currently enrolled anymore, so I, I never did the master's uh, curriculum in any program at Harvard. But um, as a student athlete there, it was just all about time management. It was never really absurdly difficult from an academic standpoint, but just making sure that you're on top of your workload uh, and getting work done when you need to get work done is really the most important thing. Right on. That's awesome. Thanks, man. What about what about socially? Obviously, it's different from undergrad to grad. But like, what are things socially in like Cambridge he needs to hit up because he's uh he's not from that area. He's from Colorado. Um, well, I'm actually I think one of the places that my roommates and I used to go a lot, uh, the Boathouse, no longer exists. So I can't point <laughs> you in that direction. But there's a couple different places to get Mexican food. Uh, El Jefe's is a must is a must visit, uh, and so is Felipe's. Right on. Thanks, man. Awesome. Sure. Is anyone guy. else hungry now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well, uh, is school going well for you? Yeah, school's going well. Um, I'm about to wrap up my second quarter, um, and I'm in the process of picking classes for next semester as well. And uh, and how's ball? Ball is good. Our opening day uh, is on Friday against Wheaton, so we're super excited about that. That's great. Um, and I think we've got three games this weekend. Um, we've got a Saturday off, maybe games the next Sunday, and then we'll roll into conference play. You ready to roll? Uh, not pitching wise, but but I'll be uh, mixing in some innings at first, so I'll be ready for the first weekend there. Oh, you're a two way. Uh, now I am. Yeah. <laughs> I knew I liked you. Yes, sir. <laughs> what a stud. Go go enjoy it, boys. Yeah, of course. The. Uh, I've, I'm building up slowly pitching wise, obviously, because I'm working back from injury. So I've done a couple lower um, RPE pens. Um, I did a 30 pitch pen uh, at a lower RPE. Um, cruised like an easy 85, 87, popped a 91.4 on Rap Soto when I got into my legs a little bit at the end, which is good. Nice. So <laughs> hopefully when I'm back up to like max effort, I'll be uh, sitting in a good spot. Hey, maybe, maybe, there's a, maybe there's another shot left for this thing. I mean, hopefully that's the dream, right? Let's do it. Yeah, and we got we got baby bro who's currently at Harvard right here um, in the in the com in the comments as well. So that's awesome. Well, go uh, study up and, and win some games. If you need anything, shoot me a text. All right. Yeah, I'll send you some video from pens that I've been throwing recently as well. Definitely do that. And uh, thanks for hopping on. Of course, pleasure to meet you, Robbie. Yeah, well, yeah, pleasure, man. Best of luck to you, dude. Keep working Peace hard. Out. Peace, man. All right, but, Robbie. I will catch you later, buddy. Yeah, man. Some of us got to work for a living. Yeah, he is working. He's uh he's he's our Manny right now. Yeah, I'm the Manny. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's the hardest job out of all of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, dudes, I gotta run. Um, 
that was fun. I'll see how this uh, this audio turns out, and uh, I'll, I'll keep you posted, and then hopefully never talk to you again. Yeah. <laughs> Peace. All right, brother. See you.